everybody, Thomas here, and today I'm out here with my dad up in Tennessee with this 2220 mil. This is uh, going to be part two of actually cutting with the carbide tip tooth blade. So we've already run the blade once up to 1600 board foot, and maybe even a little bit more beyond that. Then I took it down to Mississippi, took it to Mr. Robert, and we sharpened it with a diamond tooth stone. Now we're going to see, did that sharpening do a good job on actually sharpening the blade? We don't know because we've never sharpened a carbide tip tooth blade before. Now this log right here, as you see, is a monstrous black walnut log. We're talking over 24 inch of diameter here at the butt. In length, I'm going to estimate here, one, two, three, four, five. We're talking about 15 foot long. Uh, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. I'm, I'm estimating by the bunks that we have here and everything, it's going to protrude a little bit past our first one, assuming that they are three foot uh, and, and distance apart, which they are. We're looking at at least a 15 foot long black walnut log. It has a little bit of a crotch at the end and everything, but this log also has something else. Now, if you're a sawyer, you've already seen what I'm about to point to. This right here, very indicative right here of metal in the log. We know that there is metal in this log. This is a yard tree. Where it's somewhere on this side, of course, uh, but it looks like it's pretty far in. So that was metal that was put into this log, say 30 years into this tree's life. This tree, I'm just rough guessing, is probably about 60-ish years, 70 years old, something like that. But somewhere in this vicinity, on this side of the log, we have a nail. And we're going to go ahead and cut through this. We have a carbide tip tooth blade on here, and depending on the orientation of how we cut this log, we may cut around it or we may cut through it. So part one of this carbide tip tooth blade, unknowing to me, in a 24 inch diameter hickory, which is kind of funny, is about the same size log as this, I hit four nails. Did not know it, did not hurt the teeth. Now I don't, they were 16 penny nails. I don't know what this is. This could be a spike. This could be a little nail. This could be some fence. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. Judging by the, the bluing that I'm seeing there, I'm guessing it's probably a 16 penny nail that maybe someone used to hang up a bird feeder or, or a bird house or something like that. We'll see. This log came from an individual here up in Tennessee and he said his grandmother planted this many, many years ago. And when she planted it, at first she thought it was a pecan. And I'm so glad she planted this black walnut tree because uh, it's going to be worth it for us. So I'll tell you that. So we've got the mill warmed up. I'm going to go ahead and have my dad do the cutting and I'll do the filming because I do not have my tripod. And I, I apologize. I'm going to try to keep it as steady as possible. But yeah, we're going to show some cutting of this. I'll do intermittent cuts. I'm not going to show everything, uh, but we're going to get you, especially around that, that bluing right there. We will definitely show that cut. But we're going to make a few cuts off camera just to get the log kind of cleaned up, make our reference cuts or anything, and then go from there. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoy. All right, folks, now we're out here with Mr. Robert. We're going to go ahead and do the sharpening of this carbide tip tooth blade. Now, what we've done thus far is we've switched out and put a diamond wheel or diamond wheel on here and everything. This wheel is one that Mr. Robert acquired, um, and it's, it's interesting. It's pretty neat looking as you can see uh, now in order to make it fit on this cat claw sharpener you can see we had to add a few washers there and you actually had to tap it out to make it was it the uh, the same size as the shaft off the cat claw sharpener he's also gone through we have a 7 8 tooth spacing which like a normal saw that I usually run everything and we have a cam on here that's for a deep gullet now what we don't want to do is we actually don't want to grind the gullet and we don't want to hit the back Face of the tooth. We only want to hit that front face. So let's try and get my phone to focus there. So we only want to hit the front face and we want to technically we, we want to bring the saw blade into the stone. I've got to bring this. I've got to. Yeah. When I, once I turn the saw on, we're going to slow this machine down. This machine is capable of running at very slow speeds. So what we're going to do is turn it on and gradually bring the blade into the stone. Exactly. Well, I know whenever you're sharpening carbide tilt blades that you're supposed to bring the stone into the face of the blade. I'm not capable of doing that with the with this machine. That's not the way it operates. But however, we're going to go slow enough and we're going to gradually bring it in there and just touch that a little bit until we get the feel that we want on the sharpen. 
and then we're gonna then we might be able to speed it up a little bit we haven't tried this yet this yeah is something new that we're getting ready to <laughs> so, do, so we don't even know this is going to work but we're going to try again i've been asked by a company just to try this out i'm not going to say who it is yet they want to say torture test this blade so we're torture testing it and i'm also trying to see what we can do for sharpening it. and robert has volunteered uh to help me figure out how to sharpen this now again this blade does not have a set to the blade but it does have a set to the teeth the teeth that are actually welded on there do have the set to them and the other thing we noticed on here let me see if i can get my phone to focus so if you see this tooth right here it has a flat top oh come on phone has a flat top the one next to it does not it actually has a raised tip i can really get in there it's just really hard to focus on here but anyways the some of the teeth have a flat top some of them have almost like a tipped tooth now we're not sure if that really we won't be able to sharpen that or, or add yeah, the yeah, angles we're sharpen it. no i'm saying to the, the to tip right we won't be able to sharpen this yeah we're going to see how it does and, and kind of what quality of the face we can get on this and go from there but this blade again we ran about 1600 board foot through this blade of all hardwoods it doesn't really feel sharp but i will tell you the last log that i was cutting was a black walnut log at 22 inches wide and the only reason i changed this is because the blade did rise up slightly in a knot and i figured after running this blade for 1600 plus board foot i think that's that's a pretty good run on a blade for one time use now we're going to see how does the sharpening go and what is the cutting after sharpening um, go like so we're going to fine tune a few things on the machine here and once we get a fine tune i'll start recording because we want to make sure we're gonna it's gonna take some fine tuning really to get that tooth to match up to that stone um it's a very expensive blade and i don't want to screw it up so we're gonna take our time and once we have something that we think works then i'll start filming again how many nails did you hit with this blade? i hit at least four nails some of them i hit multiple times but uh and i i have looked this blade over and i don't see any kind of damage to any of the teeth uh, nor do i see any kind of cracking or anything in the gullet itself so We'll see folks, I'm, I'm very impressed with this blade thus far, but we'll see how the sharpening goes. Stay tuned. Okay, we think we have it cutting right. Now I'm gonna show you this. Let me get in there a little bit closer. See, we're not touching anything else. Just the face of that tooth. We've the down. I mean, we should be getting a pretty nice cut there. It's really hard to tell because this blade does not feel as sharp as a normal blade, but it would cut. And we're just, again, getting that whole face there. It does feel sharp. Oh, it does feel really sharp. I don't know. I, I think we've we've got a pretty good angle on there. I think we've matched the angle quite well. We didn't know what the angle of the blade was, but it appears to be. Pretty well we got an eight degree cut on here right now so we're gonna see how this does it, feels good. it does feel it feels really good on the side too which I think that's what also counts a very clean like cut too. Cool. yeah so we and also mr. Roberts just saying we think we can probably get four sharpenings three or four least, yeah at least three or four so if you have a blade that say cuts 1600 board you can get three or four sharpenings out of that. That's, that's a lot of cutting. That's a lot of cutting, folks. Really, the, the proof will be in the pudding when we actually rerun this blade on the mill. And that'll be on a later video because the mill is up in Tennessee and we are back down here in Mississippi. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm impressed with how this is cutting so far. We'll go ahead and wait till this goes all the way around and then we'll look at the face of the blade kind of see what we think about it stay tuned all right so we've done one full pass around and as you can see it is not really even touching 
There's a little bit here and there, but for the most part, very consistent blade. The teeth on this one right here, very consistent all the way through. And just overall, happy the way it sharpened up. We, we feel that it's extremely sharp, especially on the sides. That's really where it's gonna be interesting to see. And I think that's what also accounts for a really clean cut. I mean, the cut on this blade is pretty impressive. So, we're gonna go, oh, also what Robert and I were talking about, like this would be a perfect blade for someone, excuse me, someone that has a sharpener and a setter, but maybe it's not the best at setting a blade, but with this blade right here, there is no setting required because the set is in the teeth. And again, the long-term run time of this blade is what we're gonna have to figure out. How long will these blades last? And how well will they cut after being sharpened? So we're gonna go into the shop here in a second. We'll look over this blade really well see if there's anything else we see okay folks again we finished sharpening the blade it's kind of hard to show the teeth because my phone does not want to focus on it uh, but these teeth clean up very well it feels very sharp we also measured it looks to be about a 12 thousandths or so for the actual set you know, the set is in the uh, the way that the tips are welded on there but long story short we feel very confident this blade will cut and this blade we were I think this blade is going to cut very well. And I think, again, three, maybe four sharpenings, maybe more. Uh, we'll, we'll see. So really, the proof, the proof will be in the pudding uh, as we get this blade back up to my dad and run this again and see how long we can run. And we're going to run this blade to failure. We want to see what can this blade do. We'll sharpen it as she gets dull and everything, but this is going to be kind of a, a long-haul test. And again, the, the, I think the first run on this blade, I'm trying to think of the numbers, but... Folks, I think it was, it's either 11 or it's 13 logs. I, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly, but we, that was all oak, hickory, and then one black walnut and one little ash log. But again, very impressive thus far. Over 1,600 board foot that this blade cut, and we're going to see what else she'll do. So please uh, like, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, just let me know. But we're going to go ahead and mark this blade up saying we've sharpened it one time and kind of keep track of what we've done with this thus far. So again, please like, subscribe. We'll see you around and happy sawing. All right, folks, so we've got the log onto the mill and the practice that I always use is cut the most disgusting side off. Cut the nasty side off first. And as you can see, we have a side that has dirt. This is a side that uh, when we got this from the log or from the guy and everything, I guess he had drug it out or pushed it out. And that side collected dirt and also on the exact 180 outside, there's also dirt. This is also really good because of the orientation of the log, which means we're gonna encapsulate or incorporate the crotch right here. So we have our dirty side up, we're gonna incorporate the crotch into the cut, which is what you always wanna try to get, to get those really cool feathering um, looks and everything. Also, just based on well, the way everything is right now, this nail, which I'm pretty sure this is a, probably a 16 penny nail, about three inches long or so, it appears that this nail is in this direction. We are going to try to encapsulate that nail in the wood. Now we have a carbide tip tooth blade on here, so I'm not too terribly worried about if we hit it, but as we get closer to this point, we're gonna to try to make sure that we get this inside of a cut. And I'll make sure the customer knows whoever buys this, or maybe, heck, I'll, I'll even use this board, but I'll know that there's a nail in there, so be very careful if you run this through a planer or something like that. But again, we're gonna do a, a pretty deep cut because we're not too worried about trying to save in this sapwood and stuff like that. And just by eyeballing it, I think the cut's gonna come out somewhere right here, which is good. We're not gonna run the blade through all this dirt and debris. We're gonna come out pretty high on the, or pretty deep into the log, but it gets us into where our good stuff is. The sapwood is nice if it's like on a board that's like down this direction. The sapwood, it works entirely sapwood. That's gonna be a piece of wood that's gonna cup really, really bad on you. So. We're gonna go ahead and make this first cut. I'll do a little bit of filming while my dad makes this first cut because also this is the first cut on this carbide tip tooth blade since we have sharpened it. We'll make that first cut. It'll be a deep cut. We'll turn the log 180 over and we'll do the same thing on the other side getting onto a two inch scale. I think we're gonna go ahead and leave these slabs at two inches. Two inches seem to work very well for black one of this size, very minimal movement. And then we'll really see what happens in this center section. This center section, if we can't if something's not looking right, we could also turn the center section into a mantle. Possibly, it actually would be like two mantles. So we'll see 
what this log does for us and as we cut more into it. So here we go, stay tuned. All right, folks, here goes the first cut with this new resharpened carbide tip tooth blade. Come in a little bit deeper, which is fine, because I can always re char or recut some of this. No, that's actually perfect. I'm happy with that. That's a good cut right there. I did see the blade rise slightly there around that one knot section, but we're gonna really take a look at that once we get into the log take this slab off. It is raised up a little bit there. It did raise up, so I'll have to take a look at that, and then we'll see what it does. Okay, folks, so we are learning a lot with what just happened. So there's a few things that did happen. It was not the best cut. Now, we don't know if this is something in the way that we sharpen this, if there's some kind of weird technique you have to do while sharpening. My dog is over here just barking. But um, we also did hit a nail. <laughs> and we didn't even realize we hit the nail. But as you can see, we've got a pretty clean 16-penny cut right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and see if we can pull out the nail section on the other piece of wood that came off of here to see how much of nail do we have here and determine do we continue with the next cut with a different blade or what so let me show you what happened there i mean this we don't know this is like literally you are learning as i'm learning i'm not trying to hide anything because we're experimenting with this blade to see what we can do first thing see that right there we have a divot nice divot right there so entering into the log we had a little bit of movement and then right here after this knot section it did dip down at least a quarter of an inch that's about a quarter of an inch dip that's pretty large then it rose back up and it actually tracked very well until we hit the nail so once we hit the nail it did the opposite it rose up about not quite a quarter of an inch but maybe just shy of a quarter of an inch so hit the nail and you can always tell when a blade rises because you'll start getting some really strong lines going across right here and the, the blade rose up, then it's trying to fight itself back down. So then it started dipping back down right here. And I don't really think it did dip below the plane a little bit. So not only did it rise up, then it dipped and then it rose up again and then it dipped and then it rose up again. So that nail strike might've been pretty rough on it. Um, we're going to, we're going to try whatever we can try to see what we're going to do. And we knew that this log had nails in it. And if you look right here, this line does match up with that nail up there. But I don't know if that's the only nail. <laughs> and this is a yard tree. There could be multiple nails in here. So we'll have, we'll have to see. But first things first, my dad's going up there to get some uh, tools. We're going to see if we can pull out the nail on this section right here. Pull that sucker out. See how much nail is left. And then kind of make a determining uh, decision. Do we continue on with a new blade on there or what? And then we're, what we're probably going to do is take this blade off and do some testing on some other wood to see, okay, black walnut knots can cause 
most any blade to, to dip or dive. Uh, the speed was not too fast. There could be some kind of issue with the way that we sharpen this. We don't know yet. So we need to continue testing with this blade, but I don't want to mangle up a 24 inch diameter black walnut log um, with a blade that I'm not trusting right now until I figure out what the heck it's doing and why is it doing what it's doing. So first things first, we're gonna pull the nail out, then we're gonna go ahead and change the blade out. We'll flip this log over and we'll do our next cut on the other side. If we hit a nail, we hit a nail, it's a $25 blade. It's not a more than $25 blade. I actually don't know what the, the, the final cost of this blade is gonna be yet, but uh, we're gonna do some more testing and more studying, so stay tuned. You're learning as fast as I learn on this, folks. Folks, as you can see, we've removed the nail out of the log and we removed the head out of the outside piece as well. And it had this wrapping with it. Looks like it might've been a, they were holding up like a nylon cord or something to that effect. Uh, a 16 penny nail in this tree. The bluing marks match up in the correct grain line with the base. This may be the only nail. We're not 100% sure. And we just used you know, a little nail puller and hammer and chisel and everything to get everything out. But we're gonna go ahead and throw on a new blade. We're gonna flip this log over, throw on a new blade, make another cut, and then we'll have to do some more studies with the current carbide blade. But let's go ahead and open up this log and see what she has to offer. Okay, folks, what we did is we actually put a newish blade on there and did another cut. And the cut went very well. I mean, I mean, it, it straightened out everything. It was going great and everything until we hit nail number two, <laughs> which was surprisingly very close to nail number one's location. Nail number one's location was right here, nail number two right here, but there was no bluing on the other side to actually see that. And I didn't, everything was cut and fine, didn't even hear it. It wasn't until the blade got to here where actually I was looking down the length of the log, I'm like, it's rising up. So it did do a slight rise right here, but it was indistinguishable from the actual controls. It went until about here that the blade really rose. And then I stopped it. I kind of adjusted the head. I'm like, I said, there's got to be something hard here. My dad said, there's probably got to be another nail here. So, yeah, he was right. The uh, nail was way back here. And we barely skinned it, as you can see. Uh, we actually had just the head there. We just skimmed it. But it's enough to, unfortunately, make us change another blade. So two blades, one log. <laughs> but it, it's cutting well. We're going to... Uh, uh, flip this log over. I don't think we're gonna cut on this side anymore because we've pretty much got it flattened out And we took off about a one inch slab off top of this So we're gonna flip this over and hopefully not find any nails on the other side and if we do I'm contemplating cutting about like right here and then just making this a, uh, a Smaller section right here. I do want to keep it full length because I think it'd be really cool to make uh, some dining room tables or something like this out of this but Unfortunately, we just keep on hitting nails. That's just part of it sometimes. I mean, this log is worth too much not to continue cutting. And really, I guess what I should do is actually have a metal detector out here, but my metal detector's down in Mississippi right now, so that does me absolutely no good. Um, but we're going to say that hopefully they only put nails in on one side of the tree. What are the odds of that? <laughs> All right, folks, stay tuned. Okay, folks, uh, we're gonna. I'll do a video of the rest of that black walnut in another video, but... I wanted to stop it right here because what we did is we, you saw first, you know, real time, uh, we obviously messed up something in the sharpening process. And I've talked to Mr. Roberts some more. We did order a new type of diamond wheel to sharpen. It is a solid surface vice one that has the uh, segmented pieces on there, if you will. And I was told also by some other people who sharpened some diamond or some carbide tips that you want a really, really smooth uh, wheel when you're sharpening it so we're gonna go and try that again we're learning uh, we're gonna see how this performs after we if we can fix what we did wrong and go from there uh, I'll be doing this up in Tennessee uh, the next next week in fact we're gonna go up to Tennessee and I'll go up there and we will go ahead and resharpen that blade with the proper stone or what we believe to be proper stone and then recommence testing so I know video two you just watched the whole video I want to find out that we screwed up but it did cut. You did see it cut. It did cut wide black walnut and everything. It just unfortunately was dipping and diving. Now, I don't know if that's due to the knots. I can't I can't say that. Also, we did hit metal. So I got to reinspect the entire blade, see if there's some kind of issue going on there, but for the most part, we know we had an issue. 
we're going to see if we can correct that issue learning with us as we learn this uh, because I'm not holding anything back I want to see is a carbide blade worth it I, I think it is but I have to figure out how to sharpen one uh, you don't need a setter to sharpen one but if, if I can figure out how to sharpen this thing yes I will be buying more of these even if I have like one or two of these sitting around for cutting the really hard stuff the really uh, unique stuff wide stuff something like that I think a carbide blade will be a winner but I just have to figure out how to sharpen it. So, video three, hopefully we'll, we'll test out the new sharpener, the sharpening wheel that is, and then see if we can get it to work, and then do some more testing with it and see how far we can go and how many sharpenings we can get. Also, again, the black walnut video, I will put that into another video. I'll do a, a weird little intro for it and everything, but that was a beautiful log, absolutely gorgeous log after we finally got through all the nails. It took a few times, but we got through all the nails. Again, uh, please like, subscribe. I do appreciate all the comments and everything. The channel is always uh, just a fun thing to do, and I'm looking forward to more. We'll see you around. Thanks.